There's two key ways you can avoid losing your shirt when buying a car. One is figuring out incentives, get the best deal up on the front end, and get the best level and percentage and rate of borrowing if you need to borrow some money. The other is actually not losing your shirt when you sell that car on the back end. So retail price, value of that vehicle after five years, which is the average ownership experience. So guess what? I'm going to share a list of 10 of the worst depreciating vehicles on the market. So you definitely want to avoid these because if you're looking to try to save money, maximize the value and put money into places you'd prefer to do, you know, you want to take a trip somewhere with the family. You definitely want to have extra money. You want to go out to eat. You need the extra money. You want to buy your next car without having to borrow a ton of money from the bank. It's nice to have some equity so you don't want to lose all your money. So I'm going to share those 10 vehicles that absolutely have some of the devastating value loss propositions. So you're definitely going to want to avoid if you care at all about your money. And of course, we'll work our way to the absolute worst, most decimating value proposition. So number 10 is the Range Rover Sport. And actually in a five year time frame, you would expect to lose about 53% of its value. So over half of its value is gone in five years, partially because a lot of people who love them, really love them, they buy them new, they lease them, they borrow, they, they you know, the, those people that need to have them will get them. But on the used car market, of course, very few people want them. They're harder sell. When you do sell them, you have to sort of incentivize the people on the used market to buy. So of course, you're having to drop your prices more aggressively. Of course, the reputation proceeds, you know, quality issues, reliability problems with infotainment system, braking issues, as well as carbon fouling, running problems, coolant leaks. I mean, the supercharged V8 a few short years ago had some timing chain issues and allegedly some, uh, some lawyers were chasing that one down, allegedly. And the other part is, of course, they've now recently switched to BMW's twin turbo V8. So that leaves all the older obsolescence, all the obs older obsolete supercharged V8 vehicles, kind of yesterday's news. So none of that helps its cause. And of course, the annual service rates are very, very high. The second one is actually what we're talking about is the BMW 5 Series. 55.1% of its value is gone. So yes, if you can believe it, a 5 Series BMW is even worse than the Range Rover Sport for value lost. Yes, over 55%. A big reason for that is the people that want them are usually executives. So those that are buying a 5 Series are often people that are young professionals, maybe doctors, lawyers, up and coming. Maybe not the creme de la creme because they usually step up to a higher class. But the 5 Series represents a pretty significant buy-in point. You know, six figures often to get in certain high level trim levels of the 5 Series vehicle. Now, it's also the flip side is what hurts them is because they're initially such a high priced vehicle, you're naturally going to see a bigger depreciation. Not to mention, nobody really wants a used 5 Series. The younger buyers who are looking at a used vehicle don't want one of those. They definitely don't want anything to do with a 5 Series BMW. They're usually looking more in the 2 Series, 3 Series, 4 Series vehicles. Once you get into the 5 Series vehicles, it's considered more of the grandpa vehicle. And a lot of the young buyers just not interested. So that, unfortunately reduces the size of the buying space and the and the, the the pool of buyers that you will and it drops the prices down now five series have had their share of issues in the past you know 10 to 15 years in the last five years they've upped the game with some better drivetrains their v8s have gotten a little more reliable as well as you can outfit it with both the four and the six cylinder engines the b48 b58 good engines they've gotten a lot better but it's too little too late and like i said there's no real market for it in the general scheme of things um, the next one is the Mercedes GLS at 55.5% of its value gone up in smoke in five short years. And that's the big seven seater vehicle. It's the ginormous. It looks like a long school bus. Well, not quite literally. Um, a lot of people that like that third row seven seater, it needs to fill that space and that void. But it is a Mercedes it is a vehicle that's not considered by most of that desirable on the secondary market. Again, young buyers don't care. Uh, a lot of um, even people that might be looking for the family hauler don't really care about a seven seaters Mercedes. That's not really the point. They're going looking at Highlanders and vehicles like that. Who, if they're a younger buyer looking for that extra seating space, usually it's family oriented people. So the GLS doesn't have a real strong market on the used car space. So there you go, 55%, 5% gone in five short years. The Mercedes S-Class also loses about 56% of its value. Why is that? Well, the S-Class is the creme de la creme of Benz. Of course, you get the S63. The, I mean, there's a, there's a whole variety of different um, configurations for the S-Class. 
What there is though, unfortunately, is a car that's massive, it's large, and it has every piece of technology which gets expensive. Air ride suspension is a common problem. The self-leveling, which eventually goes. Air ride suspension leaks, of course, airbags, air compressor problems with that all the technology that just gets very costly people know that and the reputation precedes it not to mention a lot of late model mercedes aren't necessarily built with the same vault like integrity if i can say that some of the older vehicles did and so again you don't have that younger buyer base you also don't have you know i mean it's an expensive vehicle you're well into the six figures so you think about that even in a used car what if the vehicle only depreciated for example i'll give you a hypothetical only depreciated 30 percent of its value that takes a six-figure car down to seventy thousand dollars so who how many people can even qualify at the banks or even care to get into hawk for six or seven year old Mercedes-Benz S-Class, got to go to the bank and say, yeah, I'm buying this six-year-old Mercedes S-Class that has uh, 85,000 miles on it. The banks don't want to lend it to you. Nobody really wants to lend you the money. So unless you have that liquid, 60, 70, $80,000 liquid for a 70 or a seven or eight-year-old car, yeah, there's a very small niche clientele that wants that car. So again, it absolutely destroys its overall value, unfortunately. Um, the next one, of course, is an Audi S6. 56.3% and the Audi S6 is gone in five years. 56.3%. Nobody cares. Nobody wants them. Not really that great of a vehicle to begin with. Reputation of reliability problems. Uh, more specifically, again, that specific clientele. Those that are necessarily looking for a used Audi aren't looking for an S6. They're more looking for the S4, the RS3s, the RS4s, those types of models that are more hot rod. The true younger enthusiasts that are buying a used Audi are looking for those. And this falls into that category of sort of the bastard child that nobody really wants. And of course, down goes the value. And of course, the same thing applies. The next one in line is the Audi S7. 57% of its value is gone in five years. Yeah, what does that mean? That means... You have a vehicle that's not, you know, that, that's not free of issues. As they get older, they get more expensive. There's more maintenance. And again, being a slightly larger vehicle, Sport Model S Series, of course, just means a higher drivetrain, higher output, and higher dollars out of your pocket for servicing and maintenance. And again, it's that type of vehicle that doesn't necessarily have the strong following. Now, the RS7 sort of is that weird niche vehicle. Some people will love it because that hot rod four liter twin turbo V8, but the S7 is sort of that weird conglomeration stuck in the middle with high costs of servicing and maintenance and a very, very small market. So anyway, moving on BMW X5, 58%. What can you say? Some of them come with three rows, but they all come with expensive maintenance costs. A lot of them have self-leveling. So the airbags, very similar we saw in the Mercedes-Benz S-Class. These X5s, they're wonderful when they're new, but all the technology means they're going to be a costly venture as time goes on. Diesels, huge, EGR, DPF, DEF, all expensive parts. A lot of people do a delete, but unless you can get them for a song and a dance, nobody really wants used X5s. Again, too many expensive parts and a very small niche clientele even looking for them. So while I owned one once, they're fun to drive, they're wonderful. For 10 years, after 10 years, they, phew, the problems, wow, look out. So beware, if you're looking at buying an X5, you're gonna lose your shirt. The next one in line is a little Italian hot rod. Well, Italian, Chrysler, Fiat, FCA, I, you call it what it is. How about the Maserati Ghibli, right? 60% of its value is gone up in smoke. Now that should be of no surprise. It should be of no shock. A lot of the Italian cars generally take a hit. And even worse now with their affiliation, association with that big three, you know, the old Chrysler products. Yeah. Some of the interior parts lackluster. Some of the switch gear is directly stolen from some of the Dodge products. And of course, the smaller dealer network means servicing them is more challenging. If you live in a smaller center that doesn't have a local dealership, you have to find a strong independent shop that can help you out. But at the end of the day, the reliability is meh. And as well, it's not as bad as some people say. I mean, it's not a ton worse than some of the German rivals. But again, the smaller dealer network, service network, the high costs of parts that are probably more in, in many cases. And then just the quality doesn't necessarily align with the vehicle. 
the overall reputation just literally destroys it and that's why the value is gone very very quickly but another one here i have to talk about is the bmw 7 series should be of no surprise 62 percent nobody wants them bmw 7 series that big executive top shelf you know uh senior vp of some corporation they're making the money they go down they slap down their card boom they drive away in a brand new 7 Series, but nobody wants them on the used market. Again, very similar phenomenon as the Mercedes S-Class. This is BMW's creme de la creme, top shovel, shelf, top tier luxury sedan. It's definitely not going to appeal to a very big market. It's a very expensive car, brand new. So unless it drops down significantly, who's going to spend that kind of money for a five or six year old car and banks don't even want to lend you money for people that might be subprime or even borderline you can't even get a loan on a six year old bmw 7 series that has sixty-eight thousand miles on it and we know it's got impending maintenance following very soon so the 7 series as luxurious and wonderful as it is to drive in they are absolutely wonderful they're some of the best driving cars of that size and capacity but Nobody wants them on the used market or those that do often can't find themselves able to get the funds for it. So it just leaves a very sliver margin of people that actually will buy those cars. And quite frankly, that just forces the seller to drop the prices down. So the last and the greatest and absolutely the worst vehicle for depreciation in five years. And remember, all of these come with a caveat. And I want to mention they all come with a caveat. While they depreciate the hardest, as a first owner, they're absolutely devastating financially. However, you as the second buyer or third buyer may be looking at some of these models. If you do happen to have, you know, a little extra bankroll kicking around, if you are able to spend a little extra cash and get your hands on one of these vehicles because you have, have a few extra dollars, maybe you have a strong independent shop that knows how to work on these, or maybe you like to DIY a little bit of your own work. I mean, I personally do a little do-it-yourself myself, and so I'm not scared to get my fingernails a little bit dirty. And so if you're one of those people that don't mind doing a little bit of your own servicing, you know, have the extra cash laying around, these vehicles, all 10 of them, represent an immense value on the used car market. So first buyers who then become sellers lose their shirts, but you as a secondary buyer, if, you, if you're creative, have extra cash roll and can fix your own cars, definitely can represent a phenomenal deal so with that said and uh, let's just get to number 10 number 10 is unfortunately it's another italian made vehicle and we're talking about the maserati quattroporte at 64 percent of its value is gone in five short years 65 percent almost two-thirds two-thirds of its value folks gone in five years two-thirds there's only a third of the value left the worst part is the, pro the initial cost of this vehicle is astronomical. You're getting up there closer to 200K in Canadian funds. It's become absolutely bananas to buy this car on a new car market. Now, with that said, you can get a smoking deal on the used car market. If you want that Italian luxury sedan, you want to feel something special. You want to feel that hot Italian, that noise, that it absolutely is unique. It has the pitchfork on the front. It's a gorgeous vehicle. Sounds wonderful. Goes great. But nobody's buying them on the used car market because reliability concerns, because challenges in getting them serviced. Dealer networks are tight, very much like the Maserati Ghibli. But this is even worse. Parts are now you're getting from the Ferrari bin in some cases. Now you're no longer paying Chrysler parts on steroids. You're now paying Ferrari prices for parts and servicing. And now that's going to cost you significant amount of money. And people know that. Parts, servicing, maintenance, reliability, phew, gone. So I hope that shares, I hope all of that helps each and every one of you. If you're looking at saving some money, those are 10 vehicles you definitely don't want to buy brand new. But you could get some great deals on the used car market and some of the best value propositions if you're looking at buying a used vehicle. If you have a little extra cash, it, you're not tying up all your money in it, and maybe you can do a little bit of your own work. Hope that helps each and every one of you. Definitely check out right there some of the best buys for 2024. Hope that helps each and every one of you. We'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.